Yes, my name is Bench and welcome back to our Star Made Logic Masterclass. It's been a while since we've been back here and we've had some exciting updates come out since then. If you remember in our last episode we looked at the delay block and how we can use it to create simple circuits like clocks or buttons. Well, since then we've now been given an actual button block. The button block works similar to the button circuit we created, however with the added benefits of not having to wait for the circuit to reset itself as well as the obvious benefit of it all being compacted into one block. There's a number of other new logic blocks that have come out, and you'll hear about them more as we continue in our Masterclass series. But for now, let's jump right on in with memory circuits. Memory circuits are a way in which we can store values. If you remember in our first episode, we explained how our logic systems have two different states. They can be called high and low, yes and no, and all kinds of other things but essentially they all work the same. Now memory circuits are a way we can hold onto a specific state and have control over how it can change. In this episode we're going to look at two different memory circuits that are commonly built in StarMate. They're also quite common in other games like Minecraft as well. First, let's look at one of our new blocks, the flip-flop block. The flip-flop block, also known as a T flip-flop, is like an indecisive boyfriend on a Friday night in that each time you ask them what they want to have for dinner, they just change their mind again. In the same way, each time our flip-flop block receives a low to high signal, it toggles its state. This is best demonstrated if we actually show it visually. Let's connect our new button block to a flip-flop here. You can see each time we press the button block, our button block goes from being off or low to being on or high. Then after a half second it switches itself off. See how the flip flop only changes when the button goes from low to high, and it doesn't change when the button goes off again. This point here is where our flip flop will toggle, and our flip flop is always looking for an input to have this movement before it will change. If I connect an activation module to the flip flop and toggle it from off to on, the flip flop changes as we've done the same movement from low to high that our button did earlier. If I toggle it off again, nothing happens. If I now toggle it on again, the flip-flop will change. Leaving the activation module on now, let's press the button. See how the flip-flop changes again? As the last input the flip-flop got was from the button, and that input went from low to high. In this way, our flip-flop block lets us use multiple inputs to trigger a change. Practically, this is perfect for something like a door, where a button could be placed on either side of a door. We connect both to a flip-flop and then link the flip-flop to the door. Now you can open and close the door from either side easily. So that's the flip-flop block, a simple little block that holds its state until it receives that low to high input that makes it swap. Now let's take a look at our other most common memory circuit, the RS NOR latch. The RS NOR latch is probably the most common memory circuit in Minecraft due to its simplicity, versatility and various ways it can be built. StarMade is no exception, with it only requiring 4 blocks to construct. The name can sound intimidating and spelt in different ways, but let's break it down to the simple classification that it is. R and S stand for reset and set. This means we have two specific inputs into our memory circuit one that lets us set it, and one that lets us reset it. The NOR refers to a specific logic gate in which the only time it outputs on is when all its inputs are off. While this individual gate isn't available as a block in StarMade, we can construct it by placing an OR gate and then connecting it to a NOT gate. Let's think back to when we covered logic gates. Remember how the OR gate would output on whenever any of its inputs are on? And remember how the NOT gate would also invert any input it last receives. Combining the two we can create ourselves a NOR gate, where any active inputs going into the OR gate would switch the OR gate on, but because it goes into the NOT gate, it's then inverted. Now combining the two, we've now created ourselves a NOR gate. To construct our RS NOR latch we will need to create a second NOR gate using the same process, an OR gate connected to a NOT gate. Now that we have our two NOR gates, we take the output from each NOT block and connect it as an input into the opposite OR gate. See how they crisscross? We've now created our RS NOR latch. 
To get things set up, we need to toggle one of our OR gates for the memory circuit to assume a state. But once that's done, we've now completed our RS and OR latch. Let's take a moment to identify our inputs and outputs. Here is our S input for set, and here is our R input for reset. When we input a high signal on our set input, the memory circuit becomes high. Now these are our two outputs here. This one is the main output, and this one is the opposite or inverted output. Think of the inverted output as just placing a NOT gate on our main output. Now going back to our inputs, no matter how many times we now toggle this set input, our memory circuit will remain high. It's only when we set a high signal into the reset input that our memory circuit now becomes low. See how the outputs have now changed? Our main output is off, but our inverted output is now on. One thing to note about the RS NOR latch is you only want to have either the set or reset input on at any one time. If both are high, the latch will get confused, and you'll get weird things happening. An easy failsafe is simply placing a button as a buffer for each input. That way any high signals you receive on either input will trigger the button, and then trigger the input, but not cause the memory circuit to break. So that's the RS NOR latch. They can be used for all kinds of things, like controlling more advanced rail systems, holding states that are used in other logic circuits, and a whole lot more. In the next episode, we'll combine all the things we've learned over the past few episodes, showing you how to design a logic circuit using the inputs, logic gates, and memory circuits that we've learned about, so that you can get the outputs you want. We'll look at how through writing what you want to achieve, you can easily determine what goes where, and put you on the road to building your own logic circuits in no time. Remember to subscribe for more of this masterclass series, along with other videos, and I'll see you next time.